Aloha and welcome to the Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My very special guest today is one of the most creative talents in this era. Having recently enjoyed the title's number one most added on smoothjazz.com and number one on the Billboard Smooth Jazz charts for his writing on the latest release by multi-Grammy Award nominee Najee. This multi-instrumentalist, composer, and producer is most known for his high energy and charisma on stage. He has appeared in such major motion pictures as Marshall and Breathe. This artist has toured with legendary saxophonist Najee and is currently on tour with smooth jazz icon Brian Culberson. He is the musical director for Canadian pop sensation Julius Wilson and has recorded with great artists throughout his career, such as Sissy Houston, Marvin Winans, Riley Richard, Shante Moore, Outcast, Denise Williams, just to name a few. Please welcome Mr. Odell, Rashawn Odell to the show. Aloha, how are you? <laughs> I'm well, thanks. You're well. First of all, I have to say thank you for doing this show because you were just here. You were just here in Hawaii with Brian Culberson. Now you're back in Buffalo, New York, and I know you're tired. <laughs> what is oh, it like? I, what eleven oh six there? It's it's pretty it's pretty late. Pretty late. You <laughs> should be in bed sleep. <laughs> so how are you doing? How's it feel to be back? Uh, it feels great to be back. Uh, but you know it's back to the uh, the grind, as we say. Right, right. For those that, for for my viewers, um, Mr. Odell, I tell you, he 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 is off the chain. He was here with Brian Culberson um, for the past last Friday through Sunday, and they did two shows every day. High energy shows, I must say. High energy. So, what I want to ask you is, what what or who inspired you to play music? Uh. I think that would have to be my dad. Uh, he's back, back here with me. <laughs> oh, hi, Dad. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> yeah, dad? so, uh, yeah, my dad. What, yeah, what age did you start playing music? Uh, well, music was just around me. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would watch, mm -hmm. and uh, I never really started until late. I was a late bloomer. Oh, really? So. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I played sports, and then once I couldn't play sports anymore, I just picked up the music, the music, and that the rest was history. Uh-huh. So how many instruments do you play, and what are they? Uh, okay, so bass is my principal, mm -hmm. and then uh, guitar, piano, um, uh, violin, trombone. Wow. And pretty much, or yeah, pretty much whatever I pick up. Whatever you pick up. You know, I played, I used to play. I started out playing the violin at the age of six and then played flute and all that through college. Mm. So I know how, I know how that is. But that's awesome. You know. So how was it working with Mr. Brian Culberson? Uh, Brian is... He he's nothing short of amazing, and I'm not just saying that. Because I'm working for him, but mm -hmm. like he's, you know, just to sit back and watch him work, uh, professionally and, uh, just on a personal basis. Like right. he's a great person, like a really really great person. Uh, he really cares about, you know, his who who's who's in his company and. Uh, it's everything. He's everybody is treated like family, um, but he's also uh, great with business. He's great with um, the music is phenomenal. Like he hears everything. Like he he's, he's got the biggest set of ears, um, and I don't mean literally, but like he's <laughs> he, 
he's got the biggest set of ears. He hears everything. Uh, like he's, I, I know why he is where he is. Well, I, I know those shows are very high energy. The whole band is is yeah is into it. Yeah, Most and he definitely. calls. He definitely definitely calls for excellence. Yes. If you're gonna be around, you know, and it, I'm sure you know you know Brian, so you know mm -hmm. that he's always great musicians mm -hmm. in his company mm -hmm. and so it's I, I consider it an honor to be asked to uh, tour with him well that's that's awesome that's awesome where did you get your musical training musical training would have to be just years of listening really and yeah just yeah I'm just soaking it all up watching my dad at his shows and um my mom would sing my grandmother actually she played every instrument and just like my dad but they played every instrument so i just picked up a lot my grandmother introduced me to liberace really wow <laughs> and, and dad introduced me to uh acdc megadeth stevie wonder uh queen some, and a bunch of other <laughs> Random albums that were oh Rick James, uh, just just oh everything. Random albums in the front room. Yeah. Well, you definitely come from a musical family. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> wow. Now, when you are not on tour or working on music, what do you do? Uh. Usually, well, here lately, a lot of production. Uh, so I produce for a lot of artists. One being this that just came out, Deanne. Oh, okay. uh, they here. It's her latest single. There's a video on YouTube somewhere. And uh, I do string arrangements for orchestras. I do, well, orchestra arrangements, that's to say, and then uh, big band arrangements. Uh, that's been the here lately for the most part you know i'm just like every average person i read a lot of books <laughs> if everybody what, else what's your favorite too. book my favorite book which i consider my bible is hope on a tight rope by cornell west mm -hmm. okay now i did read that you have a sociology book I do. Tell us about <laughs> I that. I do. So I write, I write as well. Uh, um, I write and uh, I, I, I pretty much help out people out with kids. Uh, that's always been like my vocation. Uh, uh, sociology and just, you know, just the betterment of society. Uh, but I write on, I write books on parenting. You know, I think that's one thing I'm pretty good at. Wow. And, yeah. So you just do it all. <laughs> you do it all. Yeah. And I keep I keep the books easy to read because I know that everybody doesn't want a heavy read. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to read a long time. And pretty much the demographic that I'm going for, many of them may not read. So I keep it really, really short and informative. Okay. All right. Now. Why don't you tell us about your foundation, or I should say your production company? Uh, my production company, I started back in 1998, uh, Heart to Heart Music. Uh, basically, I wanted to bring music history and music education back to uh, a community that, that I felt was dying, uh, with the younger generation not knowing really the history and the culture behind the music. Uh, mostly jazz, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, uh, I know sometimes, especially in American culture, we can kind of kind of lose ourselves and lose our identity. So I just want, you know, I just wanted everybody to know exactly where the music came from and that it's still here. Right. So the question that I have is, as you know, um, I know here in Hawaii anyway, 
and I don't know how it is on the mainland because I haven't been back in a long time. But, you know, it used to be music and the arts were in the schools. Now they're taking right. that out. So it's right. making it a little bit harder for the students to be in band, um, orchestra, take music lessons, whatever the case may be. What do you think that we can do um, to possibly bring it back into the school? Of course, your, well, that, your production company will help, but what else can yeah. we do? Uh, which is why I started the production company because, uh, you know, teaching in the public school and private sector, I noticed that, you know, uh, everyone knows in that arena knows that music and the arts, you know, is a way to cultivate kids' minds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, music, uh, the education of music, it teaches kids, you know, math and science whether they want to or not, you know, it automatically brings their scores up. Um, knowing that, you know, why pull something like that out of the schools? Unless there was, you know, an underlying thing. I don't mean to speak politics and social right, right, right. <laughs> sociology. But yeah, so which is why I started my production company, because I wanted to, that was one of the other things I wanted to derail. Uh, uh, so, you know, writing, having written music books as well uh, and, you know, just putting on uh, events, festivals um, to acclimate kids back into or acclimate music and arts back into, you know, the general population because mm -hmm. kids need it. Exactly. They need it. Exactly. Because yeah. I know that's what kept me out of trouble <laughs> growing mm -hmm. up. Oh. And because, I mean, you take the average teenage boy, they're fidgety, they need to do stuff, you know, even taking physical education out of the, uh, out of the schools, that changes everything because mm -hmm. they need that time just to relax, to get off, get off all of that energy, um, and then they can come back in and focus. Right. But they don't have that, you know. You know, then then you have behavioral behavioral problems because not every kid is just you know cut and dry focus. Um, you know, they have schools for that, mm -hmm. but the average public school that's not what it is. Right, right. Now tell me, I saw where you are the musical director for yes. How did uh, that Julius. come up? How did that come about <laughs> in Canada? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, you know, I have really close ties there, um, friends, family. So one day I got a phone call to actually just play, just play the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, uh, you know, once we started going through all the motions, they needed a leader. So I mm -hmm. just kind of took that. You just kind of took it upon. Me. I, I, I didn't. I didn't ask for it. It was. It was placed in my lap. So uh, well, you know, things happen for a reason, and it looks yeah, like they have the yeah. first, the best person uh, <laughs> to do <laughs> to do the job. Most definitely. Yeah. So it's because you know he's he's like a nineteen year old pop star. So you know he's all. About you know, if you know what that means. Like every, yeah. <laughs> everything that pop star, he wow. is that. He's the epitome. He's the epitome. So, like when I first came across him, he was, I think, probably like fifty thousand followers on Instagram. So, um, and if, I didn't know who he was, but he's an amazing kid. He writes his own stuff. He produces his own stuff. Of course, he has a team of producers and, uh. Um, out at one eleven, one eleven music. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, they are really doing an amazing thing, and I'm I'm excited to be a part. Of it. I mean, we got I think nominated for a couple of Junos this year. Wow. Well, we have to go on a quick break, and when we come back, you're going to play something for us, right? We'll do. Okay, we'll be right <laughs> back. So stay tuned.
Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. <coughs> I'm live at five every Wednesday where we have entertaining and educational conversations that are real and relevant, both here in Hawaii and across the globe. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show and is streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I'm here with my special guest, Mr. Rashawn O'Dell, uh, and he plays the bass with Mr. Brian Culberson. So thank you again for being here for our viewers that are just now tuning in. I know you are jet lagged. You're back in Buffalo, New York, and it's way past your bedtime. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we have a special treat. Mr. Odell says that he will play something for us. And this is just going to be a little snippet because what I saw when he was here was like off the chain for real. So what you're going to play for us, Rashawn? Uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours. tired aren't you <laughs> a little bit a little bit yeah and not to mention my not to mention my dad's dog is on top of my foot pedal so i couldn't get to anything <laughs> <laughs> see this is what happens when we do when we do things like this so you have the dog exactly. sitting on the bed <laughs> they don't know they don't know. <laughs> that's like okay my, that's okay yeah no 
whole thing with the looper and all everything, but you know, I've got a big bulldog on, <laughs> on, on my pedal board. <laughs> it's okay. That was still awesome. That was still awesome. <laughs> now, what I want to ask you is, um, what would you give? As you know, it's, it's kind of hard getting out into the music industry for some people. So what okay. advice would you give a new artist starting out in the industry? I would say, uh, depending on where you are, I will say as far as America, actually, you know what? Anywhere in the world, create your own market. That's it. Create your own market. Don't wait for an artist to come to West Jahunga to come pick you up. And that's nine times out of 10, it's not going to happen. What you do is create your own market. And then you allow people, if you want to go up under somebody, that's fine. But one thing about Brian is everybody in Brian's band is their own artist. Like when they, in their own city, or in their own market, they have their own CDs. They have their own, they have their own brand. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I think that's very important to for, uh, for an upcoming artist or upcoming uh, upcoming uh, upcoming musician. Awesome, awesome. What's new for you? What do you have uh, coming on the plate? Uh, so I have. Of course, I'm a producer. I've been behind the scenes, just like Brian when he came on. Uh, uh, but I, I also have my own singles. I'm finally going to release my uh, full CD. I've always done like you know a few songs here, a few songs there, mm -hmm. a lot of singles. Uh, but I'm finally going to release my CD, and there are a ton of songs on. <laughs> <laughs> because I've written songs for everybody. So I've got, uh, I think, going down the list, uh, there's Marcus Anderson. He's going to do, he's, he's going to do a song with me. There's, uh, uh, Ryan Kilgore who has done already a song with me. Mm -hmm. That's going on the album. Uh, Elon Trotman, uh, and one more, Adrian Crutchfield, who was on tour yes, with Brian. Yes, the saxophone player. Yeah, the saxophone player, yes. So he's, that's the last saxophone player I'm going to use on the project, I oh, promise. <laughs> and then uh, Brian's going to do one. Oh. So, yeah, he's going to do one with me. Uh, Nate, Nathan Mitchell um, out of Florida, he's going to do one with me. Uh, he's he's a keyboardist, vocalist, and uh oh, Riley Richard. Ah, I can't. No, I said no more saxophone players. Okay, so but Riley Richard and I are working on a project right now. Okay. So that'll be out as a probably as a single, but I produced that one. So really, well, yeah, I can't so wait that, to hear this music. I cannot yeah. wait to hear it. Not at all. Yeah. But uh, I'm super excited. Uh, and then I have some stuff with um, Alex Boo Alex Boo Young owes me a, a favor. So if okay. you're listening, Alex, I'm going to cash in. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, aren't you coming up? You guys are about to go back out on tour. I know you're in a little bit of break right now because you just left Hawaii. Yeah. So now you're about to go back out, but now on the mainland. Alex right yeah out like okay like east, so coast, uh, east coast east coast tour. i'm gonna make sure mm -hmm. i tell all my friends about it yeah that'll be great and so tell them tell out. them the, huh tell them to hail me up <laughs> <laughs> i will definitely <laughs> i will definitely tell them that but i want to thank you so much for taking time because i know you're tired to be here with me um, today. It's awesome. Um, good luck to you on the tour. I'm going to try and come out there. We'll see. Um, I'm going to try. I don't know. 
I'll just pop <laughs> up. But anyway, I would try and come out there. But thank you so much for being here um, on the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. And to thank my you viewers, so for... <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. Tune again next week, same time, when we're going to have Joshua K. on the show. Until next time, aloha and God bless.